Guys, Marina Medvin is a heroine of mine. She is a nationally recognized criminal defense uh, lawyer. She's been doing terrific work in defending some of the uh, January 6th protesters. And I'm delighted to welcome her back to the podcast. Marina, good to see you again. Um, how are you doing? Uh, you must be feeling um, not too bad because of the uh, outcome in the case of Jenny Cudd. Um, say a little bit about uh, the case and then let's talk about what the judge said and uh, and how you basically, well, kind of beat the system with this one. Well, thank you very much for having me on once again. And yes, uh, we're very happy with the outcome in the Jenny Cut case. Uh, we do believe it was an equitable outcome, all things considered. I think probably the most fair outcome would have been a $50 fine, but that's besides the point. As far as these cases are concerned, it is a fair outcome. Uh, the Jenny Cut case was interesting because we relied on a lot of independent conservative media reports of the Portland cases and the Seattle cases to piece together dismissals that took place in Portland and Seattle, and to review briefs that were filed in those jurisdictions by the DOJ, and how the DOJ characterized the conduct of Antifa and BLM on those states. And we used the government's own words against them. We looked at how much praise they gave to the protesters in Portland and praise to the protesters in Seattle, and we compared that to the disparaging remarks made about the protesters in uh, uh, DC on January 6th, the conservative protesters. And we were able to show a true disparity between the two types of cases. And as far as how the individuals were being treated, you had individuals committing felonies, victimizing police officers, causing injuries, and the DOJ dismissing those charges against those individuals Without explanation, uh, we can only presume it was um, with political motivation because there is no explanation for why. And by the way, and this is interesting, the DOJ has a table for January 6th cases and everybody's name, any, anyone who's been charged or arrested on January 6th, their name goes into this table and it's a public database. And the DOJ has a web page for each individual who they arrested on um, January the 6th and their case status, the facts against them, uh, their plea agreements, everything's posted online for easy reference. But in Portland and Seattle, there is no such table. So it's actually very hard to know who has been charged with what, what are the case dispositions, and you actually need the assistance of reporters to go out there, find that and bring it to the public uh, for lawyers to be able to truly review those types of dispositions. And so we're very grateful to independent media for bringing all of those cases to our attention. We were able to use those to put together our arguments and argue for what we're calling an equitable sentence under the circumstances for Ms. Jenny Cutt. I mean, Marina, this I think is really important because it's been made as a rhetorical point by Julie Kelly, by me, by many others, that you have disparate treatment, you have selective prosecution. It's a whole another matter to be able to document this, put it before a judge and get a judge to agree with you. In this case, we're talking about Judge McFadden. And by the way, Jenny Cudd is a Texas florist. Uh, she went into the Capitol, but she didn't break anything. She was not, um, didn't do anything violent. She apparently made some boastful remarks afterwards about we did this and we did that. But apparently she, when she said we, she didn't mean that she did it. She just mean that that's something that somebody did. Uh, and so you describe that as a little bit of an intoxicated, uh, diatribe that she made. But of course they were trying to use it against her and act like, well, the we means she did it. And so she should be held accountable, even though there was no evidence she did. But I think the good news is that um, Judge McFadden, U.S. District Judge Trevor McFadden, agreed with you that there was disparate treatment and on that basis rejected the Justice Department's effort to give her 75 days over two months in prison uh, and instead gave her a fine, but no prison, right? What, what, what was the uh, talk about the sentence and talk about what the judge said in his ruling? Indeed, the government asked for 75 days in jail for Ms. Jenny Cudd, who walked into the Capitol, walked around within the red velvet ropes. You know, the tourist ropes, she actually did that. That actually happened. Jenny Cudd walked within the red velvet ropes. Inside the Capitol, she prayed in a prayer circle. She protested a little bit. She took selfies. She yelled at somebody not to break any property. And then she left when a police officer politely asked her to leave. And she 
abided by that order. So that, that's the extent of Jenny's conduct. In terms of what she did or said afterwards on the video, she, as you said, boastfully described the conduct of others. Yes, that happened. Um, she was intoxicated in one of the videos and she made a variety of statements in that video that the government tried to use against her. It's a 25 minute video. She said all kinds of things and they attempted to use that against her. Uh, she said uh, a couple of things going into the Capitol and coming out of it that the government didn't like. Uh, but as far as the judge's main concentration in this case, it was on her conduct inside the Capitol because that's what she was charged for. At the end of the day, she pleaded guilty to a trespass misdemeanor. And the conduct was going inside the Capitol when she didn't have lawful authority to do so. That, that's the underlying conduct. And what she did inside, the judge characterized as being uh, uh, in the minimal scale of what some of the other protesters were doing. She just walked in and she walked out without, as you said, damaging any property. And her behavior inside was not dangerous or hurtful to anyone. Her words may have been, and the judge characterized her words as hurtful, but not her actions. And at the end of the day, that she is being penalized for her actions, not just her words. Uh, the words, if anything, go to state of mind. But in terms of the underlying conduct, it's a trespass. It's a physical behavior that was criminalized. Her being there, not the things she said. And uh, the sentence reflected the case. And so the judge gave her two months of probation and a fine. And the fine uh, was a bit high, but that reflected the words, uh, her language. And that's how the judge described it. But as far as her underlying conduct, it certainly did not deserve a sentence recommendation of 75 days from the government. That was an absolutely disproportionate, insulting recommendation, quite honestly, insulting. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know in what other misdemeanor trespass case for a first time offender for somebody with no criminal record, who doesn't cause any property damage, who takes selfies, walks within red velvet ropes and walks out when a police officer asks them to. I don't know what other case the government has ever requested jail time for somebody like this. And they requested 75 days here, not a week or weekend, 75 days. It was extraordinary. It was disproportionate. And it was rude. Let's <laughs> it was take, let's, absolute... um, Jenny, let's take a, I'm sorry, Marina, let's take a pause. And when we come back, talk a little bit more about uh, the Jenny uh, Cud case, but also an important motion that you filed that's being picked up by others uh, about the political prejudices of the jury in Washington, D.C. We'll be right back.